Alright, hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to set up a project with an Express or Node backend and a React frontend. And we'll basically be setting up an Express backend API and display the data from the backend API onto the frontend using React. So what I've done here is I've opened VS Code inside of this folder called Express React Project. And what I'm going to do is create two folders called Client and Server. So I'm just gonna press this new folder icon and one of these will be called Client and the other one will be called server. This client directory will contain our React code and this server directory will be where we write all of our Express inside of. So this backend is the server folder and the client is our frontend. Next, we can move on to setting up our project files. So I'm going to first set up our files in the server. So I'm just going to cd into the server directory and then run npm init hyphen y to answer yes to all the questions and to generate a package.json file that you see right here. And then here I'm going to change my server's file name to server.js. If you want to keep it at index, you can, but I just prefer the name server.js, so I'm going to rename it to server.js, and I'm also going to um, create a server.js file. So touch server.js. And I'm also going to install express, so I'm gonna do npm i express, okay? And then I'm going to install Nodemon so that if we make any changes with our, within our server file, it'll automatically restart the server. So I'm just going to do npm i nodemon, and then I'm gonna do hyphen capital D to um, basically note that it's a dev dependency. So it's going to install Nodemon. And then in our scripts, I'm going to create a script to start up our server. So start is going to be node server and then I'm gonna put dev for node mon server, and you'll understand this once we start up our server file. Okay, and so right now we've installed express and node mon, and this is all we need for right now. We'll install packages later on if we need them. So now that we have our server configuration done, we can move on to the client configuration. So I'm just going to cd out of this directory and then cd into client, and then here what I'm going to do is just uh, create a React project, so I'll just do npx, create react app and I'm going to do dot to create it in the client directory and this process will take a while so I'll cut back to the video once the react project has been created all right so now that our client project has been created I'm just going to go on into this client directory source and then I'm just going to remove all the boilerplate code so I'm just going to remove everything in app.css Okay, and then I'm going to remove everything in app.js and I'm just going to replace it with a normal functional component. So I'm just going to do RFCE so that we get a functional component like this. And now that we have this set up, um, we can start setting up the backend API in our server.js file. So we're going to set up the backend API first and then start our server and then move on to displaying the data from the backend onto the front end in this app.js file. Now to set up our backend, we're gonna to need to import express first. So I'm just going to do const express is equal to require express. And then in order to create our app, I'm just gonna do const app is equal to express. And I'm going to set up a route for the API. So I'm just gonna do app.get forward slash API and then request and response. And then here I'm just going to send a JSON array of users. So I'm just gonna do res.json and then do users. And this will be equal to an array of users basically. So I'm just gonna do user one, user two, and user three. All right, and this is basically our backend API right here. And in the front end, what we're going to do is basically fetch this users array and display every single user okay and in order to start up our backend i'm going to do app dot listen at port 5000 all right so the server is going to be running on port 5000 and the client is going to be running on port 3000 because react by default runs on port 3000 and then once the server is listening on port 5000 we're going to need some sort of message to tell us that it's listening on 5000 so we're just going to do an arrow function and this will just have console.log server started on port 5000. Okay, 
and then to start up our server I'm going to go into the server directory and I'm going to run npm run dev and the reason that we're going to need to do npm run dev is because in our package.json this dev right here will call nodemon server all right so when we run this it'll start up the server with nodemon so if we need to add anything else the server will automatically restart and we don't have to do it ma uh, manually so i'm going to hit enter and right here you can see that it says server started on port 5000 so if we go to our browser and type in localhost port 5000 forward slash api you can see that it has returned the json data right here of the users array with user one two and three and next we just need to display these users onto the front end with this app.js file and to display these users we're just going to use use effect to fetch the api and then to you know have these users we're going to have them stored inside of a variable and then use that variable to display the users on the front end now to get started with the front end i'm going to open up the package.json file that you see right here in the front end all right and i'm going to create a line called proxy and this will be set to http colon slash slash localhost port 5000 okay and we're putting this line so that we can make relative api requests and also avoid any issues that we might run into with cross origin so next in our app.js i'm going to import use effect and use state all right and if you don't know what these two are i have videos on them which will be on the top right hand corner of the screen and next i'm going to create a state variable which will contain the backend data that we get from the backend api so i'm just going to do const backend data set backend set backend data and this will be equal to use state okay and then next we're going to fetch this backend api and to do this i'm just going to do use effect and then the effect will basically be a fetch api so i'm just going to do fetch forward slash api and we're just going to have the we can just put the relative route instead of putting in localhost 5000 since we've defined this proxy in our package.json okay and once we fetch the api whatever response that we get from the api we're going to get the response in json and then once we get the response in json we're going to basically get the data inside the json and set that data to this backend data variable right here so i'm just going to do set backend data to data all right and i'm also going to pass in an empty array so that this only runs on the first render of the component okay and next we need to start up our front end so i'm just going to open up another terminal window and then go into client so cd client and then npm start all right and this will start up the front end on localhost port 3000 so just give it a couple of seconds and you can see that it's loading up and there's nothing on the page and that's because we have nothing rendered over here but it should have fetched this api and to check if it did fetch the api or not we can just open up the network pane right here and then reload it and you can see that there was a fetch request sent to the backend api and you can see that it has the users right here so we know that this API fetching is working with use effect and it's setting the data to this backend data as well because of this line right here. And the next step is to just render the users onto the web page. Okay, so now that we see these users here, we know that the API fetching is working and we're done with fetching APIs and we just need to display the users onto the web page. But I just want to go a little bit in a little bit deeper as to how this use effect works. So basically what it's doing is fetching this forward slash API route, which is actually this API route in the back end, right? And whatever response that it gets after, you know, sending a get request to the API will be this response you see right here. This JSON is the response that the client will receive, right? And then whatever data is in that JSON, we're going to set that data to this back end data variable, all right? And I've just passed in this empty array at the end so that this use effect block only runs on the first render of the component okay and next we just need to display the users so to display them um, i'm just going to write down some code and i'll explain along the way what it means so i'm going to do if type of uh, backend 
data.users is equal to undefined, meaning that we haven't gotten the users yet or the API is currently being fetched. We're just going to display loading. Otherwise, meaning that the API has been fetched and we have the users, we're basically going to map them to a P tag and display them. So to display them, I'm just going to do backend data.users.map user and then I, which is going to be the key for each P tag. We're basically going to display them by doing P and then user and key will be I. Okay, so if we go here, you can see that it has rendered user one, two, and three from the backend. Now, if we uh, add another user to the backend, let's say we want to make user four, so user four, all right, and then refresh this, you can see that it has user four. So this is basically our app and we're basically done with it. All right, so now that we're done with this app, I just want to recap on what we did. So first we created this backend server with Express and this front end with React, right? And in our backend, we set up a backend API that returns a list of users. And what we wanted to do was show those users on the front end, which is in React. And to show them on the front end, we first set up a proxy in our package.json file on the front end, and then used the use effect hook to fetch the API, and then stored the data that the backend returned using the use state hook inside of this backend data variable. And then to display the data, we first check if the data has been retrieved or not. And if it hasn't been retrieved, we just display loading. Otherwise, meaning that it has been retrieved, we map each user to a P tag and display them like this. So yeah, that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and turn post notifications on to get notified when I upload. And I also encourage you to add more to this. So let's say you want to make an app where you can, you know, post pictures. Um, you can use Axios with React to send post requests to the back end and, you know, handle those post requests and, you know, save that picture to a database or something like that. So yeah, um, there's many other things you can do with this as well. And this video is mainly just to help you get set up by connecting a React front end to a Node or Express backend. So yeah, with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.